let us move to the last reading of study session 13 market efficiency under this LOS we are going to look at the broad idea of market efficiency then we we'll look at the various factors which affect the market efficiency then we'll compare the market value and the intrinsic value of a particular asset and look at its role in the market efficiency then we we'll look at the various kinds of market efficiency weak form semi strong form and strong form and the implications of these three forms then we we'll look at the market anomalies which give rise to inefficiency and finally certain aspects of behavioral finance so let us start with the overview of market efficiency so market will be called an informationally efficient market when the prices are reflected quickly and fully and also reflects current information about the security in statistical sense for example if the share price was hundred dollar and an information comes that the company is going to perform well in the next quarter as soon as the information comes immediately suppose that there is a 20 percent change in the expectation and the price moves by 20 percent immediately so that represents an informationally efficient market so in that case an active management will not work if the market is perfectly efficient as it will not generate any positive risk adjusted returns and is going to underperform due to high cost management fees associated with it as we already know that if we are going for active management then there will be management fees associated with it and since it is an efficient market the active management strategy is not going to outperform the index or market itself then due to the management fees it is going to underperform believing that market is efficient so if we know that market is perfectly efficient then the passive management is the best bet since we are going to save the management cost then how to measure this market efficiency it can be done following the time it takes to get the information reflected in the prices as we have seen in this example the price will move from hundred dollar to 120 dollar very quickly through certain trading activities so as soon as the information comes all traders would like to buy it even a higher price and the information will be reflected immediately here the market prices should not be affected by the information that is well anticipated only the information which has been confirmed should affect the price and the time taken should be very less if the market is efficient only the unexpected information should move the price if there is an information which was expected so that should be built in the price itself but as soon as the unexpected information arrive it should change the price immediately if the markets are efficient so let us take an example if there has been any announcement made by a firm stating that earnings were up 55 percent over the last quarter so it may be a good news if the expected increase was just 30 percent so the company has outperformed the expectation on the other hand it could be a bad news if the expectations were 80 percent then company has underperformed so the price should reflect this unexpected information which is reaching the market suppose the expectations of the market were just 50 percent and the company has reported the same then the, there should not be any change in the price if the market participants correctly anticipate quarterly earnings so there is no unexpected information provided so it should not change the price at all so if the markets are efficient the price changes will happen only on unexpected information let us look at the factors which affect the market efficiency the first factor is number of market participants as we have already seen if the numbers of market participants buyers and sellers are extremely low then the markets may not be efficient enough to reflect the right prices right value of the security so if a security market is being followed by a large number of analysts investors and traders then the market is said to be efficient so these number of participants can vary from time and across different geographical regions so if a country is preventing foreigners from trading in the market to that extent it will be inefficient so it will reduce the market efficiency the second factor 
that affects the market efficiency is the availability of information. So if information is readily available and there is no significant cost associated in achieving that information, then the markets will be said to be efficient. But if there is a lot of cost involved in getting that information, then the markets will not be efficient. For example, in New York Stock Exchange, the information is available in depth, so markets are efficient. But in certain emerging markets, when the information is not readily available to the investors, it makes the markets less efficient. Third factor which can affect the market efficiency is limits to trading. If artificially certain limits has been put to trading, then that will affect the efficiency since the arbitrage will not be able to remove the market inefficiency completely due to those restrictions. For example, if a stock is overpriced and the analyst believe that the price will fall, but short selling is not allowed, there is a limit to trading that short selling is prohibited, then the investor will not be able to short sell the security and will not be able to take advantage of this information. So if there are certain limits which are put to trading, that will increase the inefficiency in the market or reduce the efficiency in the market. Another factor could be high transaction and information cost. If the transaction cost and the information cost is very high, then market efficiency will be reduced. So market will be efficient to that extent if the cost of information, cost of analysis and trading is greater than the possibility of profit earned for mispriced securities. So if there is publicly available information on which trading can be done but the cost of transaction are so high that investors do not have sufficient incentive to trade that will bring in inefficiency in the market. Let us move to the next slide. Here we are comparing the market value and intrinsic value of an asset. As we know that the market value is reflected by the market, it is the meeting point of buyers and sellers. So the value of financial asset may not be same as the market value. So this value is coming from market quotations, from for example stocks, real estate etc. So the market value is coming from the transactions or quotations from the market. Whereas intrinsic value is based on future cash flows which cannot be completely determined in the advance. For example the dividends of stocks, so they can be expected but they cannot be determined in the beginning itself. So it has an intrinsic value only if it can generate cash flows for individuals. So ideally the market value should be equal to intrinsic value. If the markets are efficient, then the investors expect that these two value will be same. But if the markets are not perfectly efficient, then these values may not be same because the intrinsic value has certain estimates of different investors. So it could be different for different investors where market value is going to be same for everyone. Let us move to the next idea which is different forms of efficiency. There are three forms of market efficiency. One is weak form, another is semi strong form and third is strong form. So let us look at the weak form of market e efficiency. The weak form states that the current security prices will fully reflect all previously available security market data. So the current price which is P should reflect all the information which is available up to that point. All the prices and all the information available should be reflected in the price. So if an investor performs technical analysis based on the previous prices and trends etc then he or she will not be able to make a positive risk adjusted returns on average. In that case market will be called efficient in weak form. So weak form market efficiency is efficient with respect to market. Now let us look at the next form which is semi strong market efficiency. So in addition to the previous condition all the past available information, all currently available public information also should be included in the price. 
so current security prices are fully reflecting all publicly available information so you cannot use any fundamental information in order to make positive risk adjusted returns on average so that is why the fundamental analysis will not be useful to make excess returns so that was about semi strong market efficiency now let us look at the strong form under the strong form market efficiency the current security prices will not only reflect the past available information and current publicly available information but it also fully reflect all information both public and private so this way using any information the investor cannot outperform it cannot generate any positive risk adjusted return so active strategy is not going to be of any use if the markets are efficient now let us look at the implications of these three form of market efficiency first is weak form let us see technical analysis which is an attempt to generate profit by looking at different patterns of historical prices and volumes so we are looking at the past information so so far the price has been moving in a certain way so now based on that information we are predicting what should be the price so if the markets are following weak form of efficiency then this information will not be of any use so this technical analysis will help market in maintaining weak form of efficiency so if there is any inefficiency arises immediately the people who are using technical analysis to trade in the market they start trading and that opportunity will be arbitraged out or the opportunity is removed from the market and markets again get back to weak form of efficiency so the abnormal profits can be generated if there is any price inefficiency in the market but it cannot stay there for a longer period of time because of the technical analysis so technical analyst will bring the market back to equilibrium or weak form of efficiency now let us look at another implication which is fundamental analysis we know if the markets are semi strong efficient then all the publicly available information will be included in the price so any kind of fundamental analysis is not going to be of any use for trading but if due to a reason for a time being certain inefficiency occurs in the market the fundamental analyst will look at that opportunity and trade accordingly so that opportunity is taken advantage of and the market goes back to the semi strong form of efficiency so the decision to buy or sell will depend on the condition whether the current market price is less or greater than their estimated intrinsic value so this fundamental analysis will give you some intrinsic value and based on that value any inefficiency if it is there will be removed so this process will facilitate a semi strong efficient market now let us look at further implications as we know that if markets are semi strong efficient then passive management will outperform active management because we know that active management has certain management cost associated with it due to which the passive management will outperform it so manager should use active management only if they can apply their analysis and they can see that the markets are not efficient otherwise the passive management should be used when the markets are efficient so we can summarize it for the weak form of market efficiency the past market information is included in the price so technical analysis make sure that this kind of efficiency is maintained then semi strong form says that all past information and all public information is included in the price and the strong form of market efficiency says that all past market information all the prices volumes etc all the public information and all the private information is already built in the price of the security 
now let us move to the next topic which is market anomalies so these are the anomalies or inefficiencies in the market which are certain kind of opportunities which exist and taken advantage of once a lot of investors get to know about them and start taking advantage the anomalies are removed from the market and the markets again become efficient for example certain calendar anomalies have been observed in past one is january effect or turn of the year effect it is being said that first 5 days of trading generate returns which are significantly superior to the rest of the calendar year so this was a, sp a special case with small firms so this phenomena was occurring because most investors sell the risky investment in the month of december because they want to book losses for taxation purposes it is also called tax loss selling so they already have certain profits so in order to reduce their taxes they book their losses so that creates calendar anomaly because of that the investors were generating certain returns then it has been observed earlier that returns were higher during the end of month or day of the week effect the average monday returns were negative or weekend effect there were positive returns on friday followed by negative monday returns or there could be holiday effect that pre holiday returns were higher so all these anomalies occur because of certain reason for example the traders were not interested in trading for one particular period so there can arise many anomalies there could be over reaction effect which refers to a situation where the stocks who are not performing for last certain period say 3 to 5 years they can outperform they can generate better returns than the stock who have been giving good returns in that period so this could happen because investors were over reacting to the stock which was not outperforming earlier so they are over reacting to unexpected good and bad news so this could be one anomaly another is a momentum effect so it also has been found that the high short term returns are followed by continued high returns so if the stock has started moving up it is more likely to move up and if it is coming down it is more likely to come down because of the momentum so these are anomalies so these past trends are affect affecting and helping in prediction of the future trends that is why it is a market anomaly so both these anomalies violate the weak form of market efficiency since we are clearly seeing that past patterns are reflecting the expected patterns of the future that is why they are violating weak form of market efficiency now let us look at few other anomalies there could be anomalies in cross sectional data for example the size effect we have found that there are small cap securities which are outperforming large cap stocks this is risk adjusted return based on the information available there there could be value effect so the stocks which have low ratios for example price to earning ratio higher dividend yield etc they tend to outperform the growth growth stocks which have higher pe higher market to book value etc so these two factors violates the semi strong form of market efficiency so it is very clear that fundamental analysis could help in generating returns in these cases and the information has been widely available at public forums still the inefficiency is existing so this is another anomaly the another anomalies could be found in close ended investment funds so the shares of close ended investment funds they trade in equity markets just as shares and their prices are determined by demand and supply so that is why they generally deviate from these net asset values and often trade at discount from these net asset value so that is an anomaly ideally they should be traded at nav itself but that is another anomaly earning announcement so when the company announces its earnings to investor it could give rise to positive earning surprise or negative earning surprise ideally the surprise should be immediately reflected in the prices as soon as the announcement were made but it has been noted that these adjustments were slow 
to the earning surprises. For example, if the expected returns of the company were say 100 million and it announces the return of 120 million dollar so there has to be a price rise which should be immediately reflected in the price ideally but it has been noted that these adjustments are very slow so this is market anomaly another anomaly is IPO initial public offering so investors are found to be overreacting when IPOs are issued because they are too optimistic about the performance but overall it has been observed that IPO as a group tend to underperform another anomaly could be because of economic fundamentals the research has found that stock returns are related to known economic fundamental for example dividend yields or volatility or interest rates etc so it is expected that stock returns should relate to these economic fundamentals in efficient market. So these anomalies are not basically violation of the market efficiency but this is a methodology used by investor to test the market efficiency. So these anomalies rise and as soon as they are taken notice of they are removed and market gain its efficiency back due to those trading activities. Another market anomaly could be because of data mining which is the process used by an analyst to analyze the data by different strategies. So he is trying to find certain patterns or correlations in the historical data. So there could be a chance that the analyst is finding certain patterns in large databases. Another is data snooping which refers to the process where the analyst is using past available data to work on strategies which has worked in the past but it may not work in the future because there is no proper economic rationale for it. So this is known as data snooping. Now let us move to the next idea which is behavioral finance. Behavioral finance focuses on the investor reaction to different situations it looks at the psychological behavior of the investor it also explains some of the market anomalies so they might arise because of the particular behavior of the investors in a certain situation one situation could be loss aversion it refers to a situation where investors tend to avoid risk when they are faced with losses however they tend to become less risk averse when they are generating profits ideally they should have same level of risk appetite throughout but behaviorally it has been found that when they are making losses they become risk averse and when they are making profit they become risk takers similarly another behavioral aspect is overconfidence of the investors so when the forecasting earnings of their funds the investors are showing overconfidence so they generally overestimate their future returns so this is overconfidence since they are not able to factor in all the expected risk associated they are underestimating the risk and overestimating the profits so let us look at the other behavioral finance concepts one is representativeness so under which investors perceive that the good companies will always provide good returns to them Theoretically it is not true since the good companies will have their complete value reflected in their prices. So if there is no unexpected information about them, there will be no appreciation. Second is gambler's fallacy. This happens when investor links future outcome on the basis of recent results. If the markets are efficient, all the outcome of recent results are already reflected in the current price of the stock. So it cannot be linked to the future outcome. Third is mental accounting. Generally the investors evaluate their investment performance on individual basis. Although they have already created a portfolio but they are not able to look at the complete portfolio as a whole. They are generally found to have evaluated their performance individual basis. 
Another aspect is conservatism. It has been found that the investors tend to react slowly on the changes in the market. So all the information is not immediately reflected in the price. Another effect is disposition effect. So it has been observed that investors cover their position when they are earning profit. They generally tend to book profit early, but they do not cover their losses with the same speed. Because they believe that investment will eventually appreciate, so they do not cover their losses. So this is disposition effect. And finally we have narrow framing where the investors focuses on issues in isolation. They do not look at the complete picture from a portfolio point of view. So it is called narrow framing. Another aspect is information cascade. So this is also observed that there are uninformed investors who follow the investments made by informed investors. As they do not have clear information, so they follow the informed investors and they watch the decisions taken by them so that might create a cascade effect so if the informed investor has made a mistake the same mistake will be followed by unin uninformed investors as well this is also called herding behavior so this was about market efficiency